Hey guys, so we have some Bravo news. Let's get right into it. So Bravo, uh, their social media platforms, they release a video where Andy Cohen, the face of Bravo, he's at his clubhouse. And I personally felt that it was done uh, in a way where they were hoping that they would be able to be slick and that the public wouldn't notice. And what they did or what Andy Cohen said was, we're addressing the rumors and BravoCon will be back and get ready for it. BravoCon is coming back in October 2025. And I felt like it was done in such a way that maybe they were hoping that the majority of the public wouldn't question, well, what the hell about October 2024 um, but of course a lot of people picked up on it and realized it and what do you guys think did you feel the same way do you think that it was like done because they were hoping that they would be able to kind of swing by without a lot of people picking up buzz about it or generating buzz about it there's a lot of theories going on about why there is no BravoCon this year now, at the top of the theories is that there's so many lawsuits going on, you know, and I do think it has a little something to do with it, but I don't think it's the overall reason. I think it's just an accumulation of reasons. So I do want to say something, though. All of the lawsuits that are happening out in the West Coast, they are all done by these two lawyers. These two lawyers have their fingers in everybody's pie. So to give you an example... Stephanie's, Stephanie Franco's whole reality reckoning bullshit is spearheaded by these two lawyers. These two lawyers are also the lawyers that are representing Brandy Glanville in what she claims is sexual harassment from Andy Cohen, as well as representing Raquel Levis, Rachel Levis. She goes back and forth with her name. I don't know what name she's calling herself now. But she also sued Tom and Ariana, claiming that what they did to her was revenge porn. So these two lawyers, it's two guys, two men. These two lawyers are also the ones that are representing her lawsuit. Now, another lawsuit that has came out is... Uh, there was a cast member, her name is Faith Stowers. She was the only black cast member. And two other cast members, Sassy and Kristen, they had filed a false police report. And they more or less acknowledged that they knew that it was false, but they did it anyway. There was a whole controversy about it. It happened in 2020. It was at the height of the... Black Lives Matter movement with George Floyd and all that other stuff, and they ended up getting fired. Bravo came out and, you know, made a statement about it and everything. But now we're in 2024, and the two of them have came back on, and they're actually on a new show called The Valley. Well, the lawyers, the two men that are representing fake stowers against her lawsuit with Bravo claiming racial discrimination is also representing faith. So all of the lawsuits that are happening out in the West Coast are just spearheaded by these two lawyers. Now, Andy Cohen himself directly is not involved in any of the East Coast lawsuit but he is name dropped in a lot of them. So Liam McSweeney basically came out and said he's a cokehead and all this other stuff. Um, even though she doesn't name him directly in her lawsuit. Caroline Manso has a lawsuit against the whole entire alphabet soup. Um, and the same people that are representing Caroline Manso are also representing the butler from season two of Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. His name's Marco. So I don't know. Um, it could be that it is because Bravo, NBC, and the production companies are facing a lot of lawsuits. That could be one of the reasons. But I want to say something. Lawsuits like this against the network, against studios, and against executives, as well as against production companies, they are very common. 
they are very very common as a matter of fact if you guys are a fan of roni you will know that sonia morgan she basically had to file for bankruptcy because a studio sued her for breach of contract um again if you guys are a fan of roni and jill saren she said something um to Sonia Morgan, it was one of the episodes, and Jill Saren said to Sonia, "You know, you should settle with the studios because the jury will always side with the studios." Now, whether you guys believe that or not, I do want to kind of give you a comparable, uh, some a, a comparable example. The Fox News Network, Fox News Corporation. They had so many allegations of discrimination, sexual harassment, and everything. There was a whole entire movie based on it, Bombshell or Blonde or whatever the hell that movie is called. There's just been so many allegations against the company. They also got sued、um, by Dominion and Sematics. They settled with Dominion for almost eight hundred million dollars, and Tucker Carlson was fired also. Now, some guy,、uh, Bill O'Reilly, he was fired. Some other guy, I can't remember what the hell his name is. They fired him. He was running like Fox News, and、um, his last name was Alice, Alice, or something like that.、Um, well, anyway, so they had a lot of lawsuits, right? They had a lot of settlements, a lot of lawsuits, and etc. A few people got fired.、Um, But Fox News is still standing, and Fox News Corporation is one of the few、um, separate, like separate entities that did not get sold with the Fox Network. So Fox Network and Twentieth Century Fox that actually got sold to the Walt Disney Company, but. Fox News was retained by the Murdoch family. So the Murdoch family actually owns the Wall Street Journal, Sky News,、um, the New York Post, which also owns the Page Six. You know that's why they're very. A lot of people feel like Page Six is very kind of like tabloidish. Page Six is a sub company of. The New York Post. The New York Post is owned by the Murdoch family, and the Murdoch family, when they sold the Fox Network, they sold everything except for the Fox News Corporation. The Murdoch family still retains that. So, I'm just giving you guys a comparable example of another network that have had a lot of lawsuits, a lot of scandalous, controversial lawsuit. But of course, as we all know, Fox News is still around, and. I don't, and because of that, I don't think that this has anything to do with the lawsuit. Even if it does, I don't think that that is the sole reason. Now, what else is going on in 2024? Well, if you are in the United States, then hopefully you are aware of the fact that 2024 is a presidential election year. Now, Andy Cohen, in his little video clip, it he did say that BravoCon was coming back in 2025, and it's going to be held at the Caesar Forum. So they already have a place set up. Why would it take so long, right? There is not a lot of places to have a convention in Las Vegas. P- these things are booked in advance, years in advance. So. Did somebody drop the ball on this? Did they think that they had enough time? Did they think that、um, they would be accommodated? Maybe, maybe they didn't realize that they needed to plan like two years in advance. Again, it is there's not there's very limited places that you could have a、um, an event, a week long event or a week event in Las Vegas because. When you're in Vegas, all the venues are booked. Whether it's booked for like conventions or whether it's booked by,、uh, you, you know, entertainment like residencies or they have like shows. They have like a lot of fight shows going on. They have a lot of conventions going on. So maybe somebody dropped the ball when they were trying to schedule it and didn't realize that they needed to schedule this years in advance. Maybe. 
they realized that the whole entire year of 2024 was booked and there was no place to have it. Why would it be booked, right? Well, normally Vegas is booked anyway. There is, again, there is very few venues that you could have a convention of the size of BravoCon like they did. But what else is going on in 2024? It is a presidential election year. There's going to be a lot of campaign rallies, campaign speeches, campaign stump grounds, whatever you want to call it. Nevada is a battleground state. Nevada is not blue or red. It is a battleground state. So a lot of money and a lot of politics and a lot of corporation lobbyists, etc., they're go they only focus their energy, their money, and their resources in a few states. We have 50 states, but the majority of those states are ignored because they are either ruby red or sapphire blue. So, you know, the the RNC is not going to go to a state like New York and put a lot of money or do a lot of uh, lobbying or trying to sway people just for the fact that New York City will take up the majority of whatever the votes are for people out in Long Island, Westchester, upstate New York. Their vote counts, but the majority of the population is centered around New York City. New York City is a very liberal city, so the state will always be a democratic state just because of New York City. It is the same for California. California, the majority of the votes for the state is centered around very populated cities like LA, Hollywood. Like the Los Angeles County area is basically where all the votes come from. So even though you have red district, the state itself will be a blue state, and same thing for, you know, other, other areas, other, uh, other states that do not have a significant amount of very populated cities that could turn it either way. But now Nevada is not a state that is blue, and it's not a state that is red. It's a battleground state, and same could be said for the state of Pennsylvania. Arizona is turning into a battleground state. It used to be very reliable Republican. And in the last two elections, they had turned towards uh, the Democrats. So Arizona is a battleground state now. So having said all of that, you know, because it is a presidential election, this country is going to be very politicized. I feel like whatever the hell is going on in Nevada, there's probably no venue to accommodate BravoCon because, again, presidential election. There's going to be campaigning. There's going to be events. There's going to be fundraising. Maybe they just couldn't find any place because, you know, nobody thought that far in advance. Maybe they thought that a year was enough and they realized, oh, shit, no, a year is not enough. You got to understand, BravoCon happens in the fall okay what is the fall the fall is election a lot of networks that are under NBC and while Bravo has a you know a nice size fandom Bravo is not their number one network they have E Entertainment they have the sci-fi they have Oxygen they have um, Telemundo MSNBC they have USA they have a whole bunch of network that falls under the US uh, under the NBC Universal umbrella. So while Bravo has a popular fan base, it is not their moneymaker network compared to their other network. I know that's hard for you guys to believe, but this is something that you could look up. Um, you know, if you want to compare all of the sub networks that fall under NBC to what it is with Bravo, Bravo's budget is not as big as the other network's budget, and they all fall under NBC Universal, which is owned by Comcast. Comcast Corporation owns NBC Universal. Anyway, Getting back to it, though, so, you, you know, it's when you look at it from a corporate America standpoint, I feel like NBC is not going to put that much emphasis on Bravo, Bravo Con, because 
This year is also the Summer Olympics. The Summer Olympics 2024 is being held in Paris, and NBC has the exclusive rights. NBC Universal has the exclusive broadcasting rights in the United States to air the Olympics. So the Olympics, of course, happens in the summer, and then we have the presidential election in the fall. BravoCon happens at. The end of October, beginning of November. If you guys look at the calendar for all of the BravoCon years, that is when BravoCon is held. It's held in the end of October, the beginning of November. That is when election happens. Election is the first Tuesday of November, and you know, with early voting, is towards the month of October. So. I feel like it's just a perfect storm, a perfect timing for BravoCon to not happen because of all of these things, because of the Summer Olympics, because of、um, you know the presidential election, because it's in Nevada,、um, and again Nevada being a battleground state, but also you know maybe they just didn't realize that they needed to book it in advance, and you know when they did realize it, there was just not anything available, and that's why they're coming back October twenty twenty five instead. They are going to be at the Caesar Forum in Las Vegas. Okay, what else? Right. Well, again, let's go back into the Summer Olympics. Summer Summer Olympics. NBC has the exclusive rights to broadcast it, which means it's going to be broadcast on all of their sub networks. You will be able to see the Summer Olympics on freaking. Bravo! If you wanted to, at like three in the morning when you can't sleep, you could turn on Bravo and watch the Summer Olympics.、Um, the Summer Olympics is going to generate them more that revenue than a sub network like Bravo. You guys have to understand, as much as you guys love Bravo, it is again, it is not their money maker network compared to their other sub networks, and. They do not have the same overall audience as the NBC network. So NBC, which in New York City is Channel Four. I don't know what channel it is in other states, but in New York City, NBC is Channel Four, and they have their own shows. They have um, they what the hell do they have? They have um. America's Got Talent, a huge, huge, successful franchise. They have The Voice. They have a whole bunch of shows are getting pitched. They have Law and Order SVU. Olivia Benson is now a freaking captain. She started off this this freaking series as a junior detective with Elias Stapler, and now she's legit a freaking captain. So. You know, Law and Order SVU very popular. They have a whole bunch of other shows that are on NBC, the actual NBC.、Um, so that is actually their money maker. They all fall under NBC Universal, but the NBC network itself, which again is Channel Four in New York City, I have no idea what channel it is everywhere else. But the NBC network itself is actually their money maker. So I feel like. Again, just perfect timing for a perfect storm. You got the election. You got the Olympics. You have this very limited time where you host BravoCon, and unfortunately, that time frame that you want to host BravoCon is going to be right smack in between the end of the Summer Olympics and the beginning of the election season. Election is the first Tuesday of November, so bad timing. I mean, it's perfect timing for a perfect storm, but it's bad timing if you're who if you're the person who's in charge of BravoCon. It's ha- it's happening in Nevada, battleground state. Does it have anything to do with the lawsuit? It might. It might. I don't think that's the sole reason, but I'm sure the lawsuit doesn't help.、Um, And yeah, something else I wanted to kind of state is that it feels like the network Bravo is moving away from the housewives a little bit. The reason why I say that is because the whole entire month of、um, 
the whole entire month of April, there is no housewife airing right now. There's no housewife show that is airing. New Jersey comes back in May, and they're going to be the only franchise, the housewife franchise, that will be airing. So they kind of dropped the ball on that too. They had multiple housewife franchises airing simultaneously, and there was like you would have like three housewife franchises going all at once. And now what happened? Now you're kind of like in this slump area where there is this kind of like hiatus where there's no housewife show airing. And then when it comes back, there's going to be only one housewife show airing. So I kind of feel like what is going on, right? Okay, again, if we're looking at it from a corporate America standpoint, New Jersey has been on for 14 seasons now. I feel like a cash change is coming, whether it's Teresa or Melissa or Margaret Josephs, one of them is going. If I had to put my money on the on which three is most likely going to be Margaret Josephs. And the the reason why I say that is because there is no interaction between Teresa and the Gorgas or Margaret Josephs. Now, the second thing that I want to say is that they are airing this in May. They are airing this in May with the reunion and everything. This is going to go into at least the end of July. If not the end of July, then the beginning of July with the reunion and everything. Okay. They are competing against the Olympics. I mean, I don't know. It's coming on Sunday. Sunday is, I personally feel like Sunday is a very hard time slot. When you put a show on Sunday, you are competing with major broadcasting networks because the top slot time frame is from 8 o'clock until 10 o'clock, and it's on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But you are competing now against networks like CBS, ABC, and the regular NBC network. You're competing against those shows. So I don't know. But you you get the option of viewing all of uh, the episodes the next day, the following morning at like 7 in the morning on the Peacock app. So we'll see. I feel like they're... I feel like this is not going to be a good season for New Jersey just because, again... They are airing them kind of like around the same time as the Summer Olympics. They are the only franchise that is going to be airing. That The only Housewife franchise that is going to be airing. The other ones are in production right now. And there's also going to be no BravoCon this year. And yeah, I mean, I feel like a major cash change is going to happen. We might also finally get... A design factor between the Gorgas or Teresa. They might finally make that decision. It, but if they don't make that decision, then it's definitely going to be Margaret Joseph. That's how I feel. What do you guys feel? Um, I really feel like it's not a choice between Teresa and the Gorgas. It's more of a choice between the Gorgas and Margaret Josephs. And... If it came down to it, it's probably going to be Margaret Josephs that leaves. Andy Cohen has said that the current season of no interaction cannot be sustained. So I do expect a major cash change to happen. Let's see. Um, what do you guys think? What do you guys think about all the theories? Do you think it's about the lawsuit? Do you think it's about the Olympics? Do you think it's about the presidential election? Do you think it's about Nevada being a battleground state? Or do you just think somebody dropped the ball, didn't plan far enough in advance, and didn't realize that a year wasn't enough to request for a venue, that you needed at least two years? And anybody who has ever had to plan a wedding in a very um, popular venue, you guys know that some of these venues are booked out like three years in advance. You might go there thinking, oh, well, you know, I'm getting married next year. This is more than enough time to like, you know, request it. And then you go there like Leonard's of Great Neck. Leonard's of Great Neck, you might have a, um, you, you might have a date in mind, but when you go there, they're like, 
no, sorry, um, we're booked that weekend. So this could be the exact same thing, you know. Maybe they thought, oh, okay, whatever, you know. Um, we It's a year in advance, we have enough time. And then they didn't realize that, oh, shit, you know, uh, there's no openings for that week in October or that week in November because it's a presidential election year. So let me know what you guys think. And don't forget to hit the like, follow, subscribe, and leave me a comment on all that good jazz. My little girl is like running amok 